I came in the market say 91 that was the Harshad Mehta bull market. Oh wow. Brilliant. And uh, you know I I kind of experienced or saw trends first hand because I saw what a stock like ACC could have done. Luck is a reality of life. But the thing was that you can be lucky in buying but in selling that is where I found that you know the challenge was. You mentioned you know two stalwart names uh Parag Parekh and then there is the original big bull right Mr Rakesh Junjunwala. Yeah yeah. Rakesh ji obviously was much later in my career some people are just a stat statistical oddity i mean i think he's one of those he was so brilliant so brilliant in so many areas hmm. apart from being a great trader he was a great investor very successful in private equity and i felt that he almost had the 3x the brain power that most of us had the game is all about the psychology it's hmm. the mindset hmm. and it's between you and the market so in that sense of the term this whole stock market is a very meditative experience Hi folks, it's the weekend and you know what that means. It's time for you to join me Surubhi Upadhyay at the CNBC TV18 Market Cafe. Now this is a show where we have been bringing you lots of conversations on investing, on how to deal and navigate the stock market, how to make money. Well, different people have different philosophies and different ways and methods when it comes to investing. Some people like to follow growth stocks, the ones that have big earnings push behind them. some like to be contrarians basically that means they go for stocks that are unloved in the market at that particular point in time and then there is something called trend investing following the market's trend my guest on the show today is expert in exactly this type of investing he has been doing it very successfully for the last 30 years not just that hold your breath i know you'll want to know more about this he is someone who has worked with mr rakesh junjunwala the street's original bull for a long long period of time almost 10 years i know you want to know more so let's go inside and let me introduce you to him so good to uh, see you, you here thank you so much for uh, taking out the time making the effort different vibe not the studio yeah it's how nice. do you find it it's nice it's <laughs> nice it's, it's a much more relaxed environment you know? oh absolutely yeah. and i'll try not to ask you that question about where is the nifty heading in the next 6 months market kya lagta hai <laughs> market kya well, that maybe it'll come up i can't promise but i'll try standard stock market question yeah we do that all the time in the studio so i, I thought know. let's I make know. this uh, a little yeah. different but now you know Diwali is done. All the Diwali Mohurat hype is over. World Cup is over. We're drawing down to the year. And typically, how is this time for you? Does like work ease out? Less no, client no, no, calls. No, no, no. In no? fact, in fact, I feel that the last week has all been about Diwali and cricket. Yeah. And now we are all getting back to work. So <laughs> I think it's good. It's going to be a good, I think, one and a half month mm. till, of course, you have New Year's and Christmas. Yeah. That's that's a week of uh, vacation. But I think this yeah. is a great time. The weather is also improving, so it's so much Finally. nicer and. Uh, I love this time of the year. I love this. Absolutely, yeah. it's that little little bit of a Mumbai winter, if if we can uh, at well, all call it that. I mean, <laughs> as I said, you know, winter. I don't know, but whatever. Yeah. So, viewers, I wanted to tell you this that, uh, of course, a lot of experts have different styles of investing. For the many many years that we have been uh, interviewing Atul and you know following his uh, talks on the market, uh, your style has been all about following trends. You're yeah. a trend follower, right? Right. I wanted to understand the art, science, and the whole thinking and philosophy behind this, uh, and therefore this chat. So sure. take it away. So trend following, as the term goes, mm -hmm. is I would just put it in five words. Mm -hmm. It's about buy strength, sell weakness. Buy the strength, sell the weakness. Absolutely. Sounds very simple. I'm sounds, sure it's not. <laughs> sounds very simple, and you know, in Gujarati uh, uh -huh. markets, a lot of evolution from the Gujarati thought processes. Mm. Rakesh ji used to say this line ke vadhare vadhare levanu ghatade ghatade bechvanu okay. means that when it's going up you uh -huh. need to buy and when it's going down you need to sell so mm. if you put it in a very anglicized way <laughs> it's about buy strength uh, sell weakness and that is actually trend following 101 mm. and i have actually it's not something i read a good book etc but it's been a part of my evolution mm. you know i came in the market say 91 that was the harshad mehta bull market oh wow brilliant and uh, you know i i kind of experienced or saw trends first hand because i saw what a stock like acc could have done you know where the kind of wealth it created so mm. over the years i have really seen that the market rewards few mm. few winners mm. whether it's stocks whether it's individuals whether it's strategies mm. however 
to how do you identify all of them it's very difficult to predict all of them hmm. so the thing or the quality that stands out in these winners is the fact that these show trend hmm. these show strength hmm. and this strength behavior is really what is the characteristic of all winners of all disproportionate wealth creators and it took me almost 10 years to you know come to this philosophy uh I started in '91 or so, you know, as a fundamental analyst with Parag Parekh, and wow. uh, then I went to Australia. I did a master's in international banking. I came back, and you know, when the IT bull market happened, I again participated in a beautiful stock called Wipro. However, when the IT bull market bust, hmm. I kind of, you know, found that all the gains made by investors over years actually vanished, and this really brought in a need to study another style. Hmm. And I was reading a beautiful book. called market wizards by so, jack schwiger so wait hang on uh, till the time uh, you went in that was almost a decade right till dot dot com sort of high height and hype was happening right you were not a trend follower till no then? not really see okay. these are these are evolutions okay. we keep evolving mm-hmm. there's there's no book to read you know people a lot of kids come to me say sir give us that one book to read there mm-hmm. is no book to read okay <laughs> every book is a learning yeah. and markets always teach mm-hmm. markets always evolve mm-hmm. the beauty is because the markets themselves are changing yeah, absolutely. there is nothing absolute and finite uh-huh. change is a constant in this market so what okay so what made you take that call in the early 90s of backing acc or backing with i was just lucky i was just wow. lucky as far as acc goes <laughs> honestly <laughs> no no acc at that stage we just come in the market i was doing my ca we uh-huh. just got lucky in the uh-huh. case of wipro i think the reason was that since i had studied abroad i understood a little bit of tech okay. and i understood the power of technology okay. so when the whole tech boom happened hmm. i i believed in technology right okay. i saw it happening when i was overseas and i got into technology okay. and again you got into wipro as hmm. i said that luck is a reality of life but the thing was that you can be lucky in buying but in selling that is where i found that you know the challenge was hmm. and that's when you know let me get back to this book which was the most important influence in my life was this book called market wizards by jack schwager okay in that i would highly recommend to anybody who hasn't read the book to please read it market wizards by, by jack, jack schwager, schwager. Yeah. okay noted noted and it's a lovely <laughs> it's a very easy read it's a question answer between some of the top fund managers hmm. and uh, the author jack schwager there there was a person profile called ed psychota very few people know about it okay. but ed psychota was one of the most interesting characters in that book okay and he was a fund manager a hedge fund manager of in the us mm. and i started sort of looking for him till you know i was able to find a few people in mumbai who followed him and you won't believe a few years later i met him and i did a course with him in cambridge ah and he for me has been the guru of trend following so ed psychota i mean he was he a guru who I uh, was following technical analysis or fundamental or so he he is an absolute brain okay he's one of those one of those super super brains mm-hmm. and he got into uh, what you call model making or digitization very early in life okay. he knows how to code etc oh. so the important part about him was that he got out the mechanics of trend following which mm-hmm. i told you is simple buy strength sell, sell weakness. weakness sounds mm-hmm. simple right it's absolutely <laughs> simple but the challenge about doing this is mm-hmm. a psychology Mm. is the emotion mm. and the discipline of following the process and mm. the ability to follow the process is what separates success and failure as far as trend following in our markets actually if you go to look at it survey it's not rocket science <laughs> it's not most guys coming with a ca or an mba are more than qualified yeah but the fact is that when you spend time and especially when you start managing money uh-huh. you realize that the game is all about the psychology it's mm. the mindset mm. and it's between you and the market So in that sense of the term this whole stock market is a very meditative experience. No absolutely I I remember reading a book a uh, very famous one called The Psychology of Money and I guess that kind of expands on what you're saying yeah. ultimately how we react to money or wealth or the lack of it yeah. or the desire or the want of it I think that determines to a large extent how we sort of yeah. you know and these things actions. are very very yeah. imbibed in us in our subconscious state. Yeah. You know we I've done a lot of work on this mm-hmm. so so I can tell you that mm-hmm. that it is very very deep rooted. and yeah. it is so linked to your personality to your early influences yeah. so it's a world out there yeah. and yeah, the beauty yeah. about the market is it gives you these platforms opportunities to go within yourself mm. to know yourself mm. Mm. and it all translates or gets mm. reflected in what we buy and sell so oh, absolutely all sounds simple but it's a beautiful <laughs> journey yeah so we're going to try and figure out more of how to do what sounds simple as well but before that you spoke of influences and uh, you mentioned you know two stalwart names 
uh, Parag Parikh and actually Neil Parikh, his son was on the show, our Diwali special edition of the show and I was asking him about how they sort of carry that thought process of deep research etc. So that, that's one influence. And then there is the original big bull, right? Mr. Rakesh Junjunwala. Yeah, yeah. Talk us through a little about the experiences and you know what, what these two gentlemen left on your mind. So as far as Parag Parik goes, uh, more than Parag Bhai, there used to be a gentleman called Chandrakan Sampat. Ah, yes. He used to, uh, he was also a great investor. He used mm -hmm. to visit the office very often mm -hmm. and he was like a guru. So we would almost like sit and listen to him. Okay. Of course, what he spoke to me, remember, I was just a kid out of college. 80% mm. like went over. <laughs> but the thing is that there were some impressions or some thoughts that he left, which, mm. which were really, really path breaking mm. and they stayed with me. So mm. I would say that the person I learned from very early in life or heard, I would say, I don't know how much I understood was Chandrakan Sampat. As okay. I said, I was a kid then. Yeah. But Rakesh ji obviously was much later in my career. I met him and I think that was a fantastic guy. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, some people are just a stat statistical oddity. I mean, I think he's one of those. He was so brilliant, so brilliant in so many areas. Mm. Apart from being a great trader, he was a great investor, very successful in private equity. And I felt that he almost had the 3x the brain power that most of us had. My relationship with him or what I appreciate or liked about him is that the freedom he gave me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I joined Rare Enterprises, it was more for trading or more on the index styles, etc. Mm. But over the 10 years after seeing him and seeing a lot of successful investors around him, it helped me to evolve into the process of actually managing money mm. on a longer time frame okay. and using trend following. So all these discoveries, etc., that we experienced or the mm. time that I had was thanks to the freedom that Rakesh ji gave me. Okay. So for whatever he may seem like an impatient person, etc., yeah. behind that, I think he was a very, very, very patient person. Really? He was very, very patient with his investments mm -hmm. and we've seen the wealth creation oh, yes. that he's had. Yes. And I think he was also very, very patient and generous with people. And I'm very fortunate to be a recipient of that goodness mm -hmm. in him. Oh, that, uh, that's fabulous to know. It's great to know. Uh, and for instance, for uh, for Mr. Rakesh oh. Jindinwala, some of the investments tighten and you kind of briefly mentioned that it's about riding the strength. So right. let's come back to, right. you know, how to Im implement this. Um, so, so what's the call um, that you take? You identify certain good sectors or good stocks and then it's about building large positions in them. Is, is that what it is? So again, the uniqueness, as I said, that there's nobody's template you can follow in life. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, you cannot follow any investor style and mm -hmm. make it a success. Mm -hmm. It, you have to come, it has to come from internally. It has to come through evolution. So I started my career for the first 10 years of my life. I was a fundamental analyst. Mm -hmm. I went to Australia, I discovered technicals. So I kind of combined both. Mm. Again, was it a textbook? Was it a model? No, it's yeah. come over time with evolution. I've heard the, some people use the term techno funda. Whatever, okay, whatever, whatever, it's, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, I, as I said, I, I like to study and look at trends. Okay. So I believe that ultimately prices are driven by earnings. Mm -hmm. So the first step of what I look for in a company mm. is that companies that have good consistent earnings okay. and acceleration. Mm -hmm. So I like to see a good track record, a good historical mm -hmm. earnings, but there is a need for acceleration because mm -hmm. the market rewards that acceleration. Sure. Sure. And based on the movement of mm -hmm. earnings, mm -hmm. you will find that stock prices get reflected. So I combine the fundamental piece mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the technical piece. Mm -hmm. And here again, as I said in the first line, I look for strength. Got it. So Got I look it. for strength in earnings and I look for strength in prices. You know, let me ask you a, a counter over there. The general sort of thought in the market is that I need to buy ahead of the news, ahead of the great earnings announcement, ahead of this big acquisition that can change the fate of the company, right? I need to be ahead. Absolutely. It's, a, it's, a, it's good, but you know, I find that a human beings ability to predict the future is very limited mm. and we get mm. it more often wrong than right. Mm. Yes, sometimes we get it right and we can make a big story about it, mm. but our ability to predict the future is very, very limited. Mm. I mean, look at the cricket match, right? <laughs> Nine out of 10 thought India is going to win. Yes, it was yes, done. Yeah. We just had to go and pick up the cup yeah. and see how wrong we can be. Absolutely. So even such simplistic things we can yeah. be so wrong about. And leave alone trying to predict economies and markets and cycles. Mm. So I find that trying to predict, mm. you can get it right, but mm. more often than not, most people get it wrong. Sure. So rather than try to predict, yeah. I prefer following. That's the get way. Get on the trend which has been established. Absolutely. Be okay. able to establish that the trend is there. You may be yeah. late. Mm. However, the money or the joy is in the midsection. Mm. You know, there is always a turning point. 
Hmm. Yes, it's it's very nice if I get in at the bottom. Hmm. And a lot of people are about this. Oh, this has already gone up. Hmm. The question is not just that if it's gone up. The question is how much higher can it yeah. go? And the sweetest money is huh. actually made in the mid section. Yeah. It is exactly the opposite of trying to sell at the top. Hmm. बहुत बढ़ गया अभी बेच दो किसी को नहीं पता एज आई सेड आई लर्न दैट विद ए सी सी आई लर्न दैट हाउ मच हायर स्टॉक्स कैन गो और वेदर इट इज राकेश जी टाइटन आई मीन इफ राकेश जी थॉट दैट वो टाइटन वेंट अप डबल आई वुड सोल्ड इट वेंट अप ट्रिपल एक्सेट्रा द ब्यूटी इज दैट हाउ द कंपनी ट्रांजेक्शन एंड इट इज नॉट अबाउट आइडेंटिफाइंग द स्टॉक इट इज इज एबिलिटी टू सिट ऑन इट Yeah. and pyramid on it that yeah. made him the billion dollar plus that yeah. there is yeah. so i find that ultimately it's not about being the first or it's already gone up hmm. that is just hmm. your human ego that comes into play you're very okay to get in late the okay. important part is how big the trend is and ultimately these stocks which have these long trends are the wealth creators hmm. the beauty is the longevity of the trend the ability to ride the trend hmm. you know find the trend yeah ride the trend hmm. and be disciplined enough to exit Exiting is the most difficult part. Ah. We can talk about that later, yeah. but I yeah, find that yeah. exiting is the biggest challenge because the challenge is not intellectual; the challenge is psychological. Emotional. Okay. So, so, so that is really what trend mm-hmm. following is about, you mm-hmm. know. So, okay, let me ask you a question in today's context, and the question is about exiting because I think this is something that people today are grappling with. Right. Uh, look at capex-oriented stocks or industrials or PSU stocks, right? Uh, first of all, not many thought this rally will happen, like you're saying. Nobody right. could predict it. it happened now they were the worst performing sectors of the last decade the best performing sector last year psu banks yeah. worst performing yeah. this year so far year to date real estate is doing well Absolutely. it has not done well since 2008 so our ability to predict mm. is very limited mm. yes but when the trend comes it is there for us mm. and then we need to be in it first things first uh, do you think the sectors that we just mentioned industrials psus real estate do you really see sustainable long trends i do here? i do think so because mm-hmm. what happens will be that these have as i said not done well for a decade market is cyclical it has a way of surprises when things have not done well for a decade when they start trending the rally is not going to end in 6 months mm. these are going to be much more elongated and from what i study in the markets i think that we are going to see the revival of the capex cycle mm-hmm. and these are very early people say oh, they have oh, already gone up exactly. they have doubled but you know for that if you have been in the market between 2003 to 2008 yeah. you would have understood that how these stocks can move Absolutely. once the cycle turns so mm-hmm. i typically for me i think that the trend is your friend mm-hmm. till the end when it bends <laughs> nice one should keep that in mind and therefore coming to the second part of the question that that's what people are grappling with that oh but this psu stock has already gone up so much or you know a certain lnt or whatever stock has already done so much uh, specifically government owned companies which right. were you know always thought to be big duds so is it time to sell is it now the question when do you know that it's time to sell see as i said just mm-hmm. as your thesis for buying are two mm-hmm. that you need trending earnings yeah. and you need trending mm-hmm. prices the reverse is true for selling also okay. that at the end of the day you got to ask yourself that are you seeing a degrowth in earnings mm. ultimately prices are driven by earnings mm. if prices go up without earnings it ends badly sure remember that yeah. so the fact the first question you got to ask yourself is that are they still showing earning growth mm. if they are they may correct a little bit that nobody knows that mm. is the market sways but they will not really crap out okay first is earnings and second is prices be humble enough to listen to the market mm. if you see the prices if i use simple dow theory 101 these markets these or these stocks continue to make new highs mm. and from that point of view nobody knows where the top is yeah. nobody yeah. in fact very often these markets surprise on the upside stocks that are in trend surprise on the upside mm-hmm. and that has been the principle all great wealth creation that has happened in stocks have been for those investors who have not just limited the upside hmm. just because a stock goes up 30% i have to sell it hmm. well you can do that it's great for a trader but big wealth creation whether it's rakesh ji or a buffet i mean look at warren buffet look at the apple trade the biggest wealth creator in his life yeah it was in a sector which he stayed away from hmm. so called technology technology yeah he bought the stock did he buy it at the bottom no way he bought it well past yeah well past at hmm. lifetime highs and the important part is that he is still adding on to the position mm. so classically you will see that big wealth creation happens by following the trend and not just buying at the bottom and selling at the top as a line goes tops and bottoms are for fools or liars ah beautifully put so okay we know that you're pretty bullish on the market right now you said that on our muhurat show as well so uh, encapsulate for our viewers 
uh, your thoughts on if someone's looking at wealth creation, not in the next six months or whatever, a year or two years. I mean, since you're very bullish right now on India, uh, what should the approach be? Which are the big trends within India that you see? See, you know, you've been hearing about this 5 trillion, 10 trillion economy. Mm. And I think we are very fortunate that in our mm. lifetime, we are, you know, seeing this. Mm. I have been in the market for very long and we've had very frustrating periods for India as mm. a country, as an economy. Mm. So I think we are in a very fortunate stage. Now in this, there will be 5% corrections, 10% corrections, whether uh, Gaza will happen or Ukraine will happen. Yeah. Honestly, nobody knows. Yeah. Let's not try to predict yeah. the unknowable. Yeah, yeah. Now the question is election may, what if BJP doesn't come to power? Genuinely, even they don't know. So who are we <laughs> to, you know, sort of judge? So these things are mm. going to happen in our mm. life. Mm. Our question is that if India is in this journey, mm. just as I said, earnings drive prices, yeah. earnings or GDP growth drives markets. Mm. So if we are in this journey, the question that I need to ask myself as an investor is do I have the best 20 stocks? Why I'm saying 20 is because that's the number of stocks I have in my PMS. Okay. So as I said that ultimately I have to bet on the best 20 horses. Hmm. This is a big race. There are thousands of stocks, right, listed. Yeah, yeah. My job is to ultimately have the best 20. Hmm. I will get some right, hmm. some will go on to run, yeah. some will fail. Yeah. However, whatever fails, hmm. I also should have the discipline to exit and recalibrate in the next winner. So final question, how do you keep yourself sane in all of this? Because as you're saying in the FOMO and this and who has what stock and you know, client pressures, etc., portfolio pressures. How do you keep yourself sane? No, I think I'm a man of a lot of passions. So I, I have a lot yes. of passions that keep me distracted. The at sea. Time. The sea, I love scuba diving. Some scuba there was diving. running. I don't know if you still do that. I, I, I used to run. I used to run, uh -huh. but I have a toned ligament. So I've been oh. uh, advised against doing Oops. long distance running. But I do mm. like to work out. So I keep okay. that. I love my coffee. Mm. So as I said, I was just telling you before the yes. show that, you know, I, I already got a tip, guys. It's not coffee. <laughs> I have my tip. So. So I, says, I love going to new cafes, uh -huh. going to new coffee places. I like making cocktails. So I like making those lovely drinks on nice. weekends also. So I have a lot of passions. Uh -huh. I love travel. I mean, who doesn't like travel? So I have a lot of interest in life. And, mm. uh, you know, that, that, keeps, that keeps things going. I love learning. Mm -hmm. So life is all about growth, enjoying, expanding. The universe Fantastic, fantastic. Finally, uh, what's the advice that you'd want to put out to a lot of younger investors who are coming to the market, first time equity or looking at a lot of the high decibel noise that exists in the market today? What would you say to them? Cut your losses, ride your profits. Ah. It's as simple as that. Simple and sweet. It's as simple as that. We, we have a lot of difficulty in cutting our losses. But if you don't cut your losses, sooner or later you'll get a stock which will become a lemon. And you know, you will give away a lot of profits. Mm -hmm. And whenever it's profitable, ride it. Don't put a limitation to it. Ride your winners, cut your losers. I mean, that is trend following. Mm. That's where we started from. So, trend is your friend until the end. When it bends. When it bends. Been fabulous. Thank you so Thanks much, so Atul, much. for uh, joining in today. And look forward to more coffees and more conversations in the coming weeks. Wonderful. And months. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot.